Hello and welcome to Rotted Reviews, and today we're honoring another patron request, this time from patron Christopher, who asked me to take a look at the 2008 Swedish vampire movie, Let the Right One In. Christopher's reasoning for this is it is a Swedish vampire movie where the creepiness comes more from what it doesn't show and the implications of the plot. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, okay, yeah, this is a classic. This is a fantastic movie by all accounts, by all rights, and there's no way that I would say otherwise. Um, but let's dissect it a little bit more than that. And in this movie, we get introduced to young Oscar, a quiet, shy, introverted young man with one of the most unfortunate haircuts ever put to screen. And not everything's going spectacularly well in his life. He's getting bullied at school. Things are just kind of in that awkward phase for him. But things take a little bit of a turn when a new neighbor moves in, most notably young Ellie. Ellie at first face value appears to be a young girl that is accompanied by her father, but things are much more than they appear. She's not really that interested in having any kind of friends or anything along the lines, but even so, Oscar seems alone, and they kind of share company with one another alone together. And as time goes on, we as the audience learn more about Ellie. Most notably, and I'm going to do a pronoun change here on purpose, they are a vampire as well as not being a female. In fact, the androgyny comes from much more than just prepubescence, but more along the lines of being a eunuch that is countless years old. Nevertheless, with the long hair and the androgyny being somewhat female-leaning, Oscar finds himself drawn to them as both a friend and potentially more. So what we have here with Let the Right One In is more than just a vampire tale. It's a coming-of-age story. And that's honestly one of the things that I really love about some of the best horror movies out there is it doesn't necessarily rely on the horror aspect. That when we get right down to it, its core is imbued with more dramatic elements than just blood and guts and kills. That's not to say that I want to pull back from the genre to the point of like Ari Aster making claims that he's never made a horror movie, only dramas. Okay, Ari, whatever you say. But <laughs> I do think that at its core element, having foundational storylines that are character-based and drama-based really helps the horror genre elevate above and beyond just vapid kills. And having Let the Right One In be a very excellent coming-of-age story really sells that point. It is a coming-of-age story. It's difficult, it's heartbreaking, it's awkward as all get out. And Oscar's tale is no different in that aspect. He's a young man that is an outcast. He's longing for friendship even though he's cherishing solitude. More than anything else, he just needs somebody to be there for him and he finds that in the Ella character and the fact that they are a vampire just makes things more complicated so it adds some conflict to this wonderful drama stew. This is a quiet movie, it's a cold movie in both the setting and in color palette everything about this really just kind of lets the characters speak for themselves nothing about this overshadows the drama and the characters and what they are going through and Christopher is right. I think that there is a lot about this movie that works based on not just what it shows, but what it doesn't show. This doesn't revel in any kind of gore. That's not to say it doesn't have it, but it's not the principal central focus of it. And oftentimes it will show it in very clever, uh, obscured ways. And by doing so, I honestly think that it makes it a lot more brutal and visceral. If you know me and you know my channel, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of vampire movies. There are exceptions to that. Uh, it's more just I'm not a big fan of the Anne Rice kind of aristocratic uh, vampire tale of, you know, like Lestat, things like that. Uh, the notion of this romanticized person in a cape kind of thing just doesn't really... I don't know, just never really worked for me. But then we have kind of outliers where we take the notion of vampirism and come up with what if more intimate, more personal kind of situations. 30 Days of Night is a great example of that. A great what if with some good characters. And I think that this movie is a prime example of what works for me in this regard. I think it's kind of easy to look at archetypes and kind of lock yourself out of them, mummies, vampires, whatever really doesn't work for you, say that that just blanket doesn't work for me. But I think it's important to keep an open mind and look at more intimate movies that maybe approach it from a different angle and appreciate them on their own merits. And for me, I'm really glad that I did just that with Let the Right One In. Thank you, Christopher, for recommending this one. And thank you for watching this video. I do hope 
hope you liked it. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.